In the 1950s and 1960s, reconnaissance satellite technology was still developing and improving, and countries still relied heavily on aerial reconnaissance aircraft. However, with the advancement of anti-aircraft missiles and high-altitude, high-speed interceptor aircraft, the operations of manned reconnaissance aircraft became increasingly dangerous and costly. As a result, the role of unmanned reconnaissance aircraft became more prominent. The Tupolev Tu-123 was a large strategic unmanned reconnaissance aircraft developed by the Soviet Union in the late 1950s and put into service in 1964. Its role was similar to that of the American D-21 supersonic reconnaissance aircraft. The Tu-123 had a shape similar to that of a large dart, similar to some large surface-to-air missiles at the time. Because it did not require a pilot cockpit, the overall structure was more suitable for high-speed flight. The drone had small triangular wings and a small tail. The drone had an empty weight of 11.45 tons, a maximum takeoff weight of about 35.6 tons, a length of 27.84 meters, a wingspan of 8.41 meters, and was powered by a Tumansky KR-15 turbojet engine. The engine intake was located on the underside of the aircraft. It was a simplified version of the Tumansky KR-15B300, which was used in the MiG-25 fighter jet. Compared to the latter, it had a shorter lifespan and lower cost, making it a reusable consumable. It had an output of 98.1 kN, allowing the Tu-123 to reach a maximum speed of Mach 2.2. The reconnaissance equipment on board included three AFA-54 100M aerial cameras, one AFA-4120 MEM camera, and the SZRSZ 6RD Rhombus 4 electronic reconnaissance unit. The entire set of equipment weighed 2,800 kilograms. The aircraft also had radio beacon equipment, autonomous power supply system, cooling system, and autopilot system installed. The Tu-123 did not have conventional wheeled landing gear, but was launched on a track and could be assisted in takeoff by booster rockets. The track could be towed by a MAZ-537 heavy truck, providing the drone with some ground mobility. The flight route needed to be set before launch and could not be changed after takeoff. The aircraft had a fuel capacity of 19,000 liters, providing a maximum range of 3,200 kilometers. The maximum ceiling of the aircraft was 22,800 meters. After the unmanned aircraft autonomously completed its mission and returned along the predetermined route, control of the flight was handed over to the ground command station in the takeoff area. Without landing gear, it landed using a parachute. Ground personnel retrieved the reconnaissance equipment and obtained the reconnaissance information from the parachuted aircraft. In theory, the design of the aircraft allowed for reuse, but such a heavy aircraft landing on the ground would inevitably be damaged, so it was usually not directly reusable. By 1972, a total of 52 Tu-123 aircraft had been produced by the Soviet Union. They were all deployed to the eastern part of Europe and served in the Air Force Intelligence Department, conducting reconnaissance activities in the entire Central and Western Europe. It had a long endurance, no self-defense weapons, and no radar stealth capability. The secret to its survival was its flight speed and altitude. The Tu-123 was completely retired by the Soviet Union in 1979, and its reconnaissance duties were taken over by the MiG-25R reconnaissance aircraft. In fact, the Tu-123 performed well in training and had considerable reconnaissance capabilities. However, the high cost of each reconnaissance mission made it unsustainable for the Air Force. There were attempts to develop a reusable version, the Tu-139, which could take off and land from makeshift airports, but it was never actually produced. The retirement of the Tu-123 was also related to the advancement of reconnaissance methods. Its photographic reconnaissance method was to some extent replaced by reconnaissance satellites, which did not have to risk invading airspace.